Hello and welcome to This is Diana, Design Your Life with Beauty, another podcast uh, dedicated to help you not just live your life, but to design it. This particular episode is going to be dedicated to the many questions related to sleep, dreams, sleep disorders, and possible even soul travel. The reason that I am so focused on sleep and dreams is that out of all the work I've done for for decades, actually, whether it's counseling, intuitive consulting, other broadcasts, crisis counseling, uh, one of the biggest uh, parts of our life is sleep. It's one of the things that we do the most of. And for some reason in our current society is one of the things that is most undervalued, uh, underestimated, and uh, you know under processed and under talked about, except for a certain few out there that are interested in doing a dream research. So in this particular instance, when I am doing this work on design your life with beauty, I also do interior design focused on creating a sanctuary. Uh, that is your home, no matter what circumstances you're under, especially if you come from adversity, there is a way to improve your space. And all this comes connected because the more safe and restored and healthy you are, the more balanced you can be, the healthier you can be overall. And I decided that uh, I've written a few books, but I decided to focus a specific book. Uh, it's called Your Sleep Sweet Spot. And it's specifically uh, made to create uh, a sanctuary for yourself in a sleep routine or ritual, and this is this is a a book that is for not just regular people, yes, regular people, but people that are specifically dealing with sleep conditions, sleep issues, sleep disorders, have questions about dreams, and also have a lot of questions about their specific sleep cycle. So not just people that are night people or day people, but also shift people where your your sleep shifts. And the, one of the reasons is, is because I've always had a sleep condition. Didn't have a name until very recently. Uh, for me, it was just a mess, a sleep mess, where I was always sleep deprived, excessive sleepiness, it's called. And my shift, my sleeping shift always moved forward to the point where one moment I was a day person, the next moment I was an afternoon person, the next moment I was a complete night owl, then I was somewhere in between, and then I would go to a day person. And I tried every single possible thing or technique uh, that was uh, available to me to try to create a quote-unquote normal sleep schedule. And that didn't go very well. And I'll tell you why. It's because our sleep cycles are, for the most part, hardwired by our DNA and our biology. So here I am introducing to you your sleep sweet spot from New York City. I'm broadcasting specifically from New York City, just in case you hear any honking or fire trucks. I hope you will still be able to hear me clearly. But I'm here in the trenches with you. And let's get started. Let's get to, let's talk about sleep, dreams, sleep issues, and more. Okay, so let's start, for example, with the definition of the title of my book, Your Sleep Sweet Spot. Again, this is all for all types of sleep cycles that you may have. It is a sleep routine, a purposeful ritual, sleep design of your space, your schedule, and it is also a philosophy. It provides you, specifically you, the best, most restorative sleep optimal restoration, balance, and vital energy, and specifically for your unique sleep cycle. Nocturnal, a night owl, diurnal, a typical day person, and an alternative shift sleeper can benefit from this because you're finding your sweet spot. And that's really hard to do, whether you're a day person, night person, whatever. It's very hard to find your sleep spot, your sweet spot anyway because of our go, go, go technology, modern world. Uh, so, so we think. But 
we have to find it. The sleep spot, the sweet sleep spot considers your special, specific physical needs, your emotional state, your mental state, and your spiritual needs. I mean, so many books out there on sleep specifically and cycles and the sleep waves really just totally disregard spiritual needs. You just, just call it the consciousness question with a big question mark and we don't know what's going on and just kind of leave you there. Uh, the sleep uh, sweet spot also considers your environmental, uh, your environment, your specific physical environment, your emotional energetic environment. Technology advances the fact that we're communicating globally and how that is uh, affecting our life, work life, sleep life. How we're connecting with people in different time zones and using what works, what we do have, what is available by researchers and experts and all kinds of professionals and upgrading it, upgrading it to specifically work for you. So what works for you may not necessarily work for your cousin or might necessarily not work for your children or your your sleep mate or for your cat or dog for that matter. Although animals are much, much, much better at uh, simulating to each of our needs. They really are. Um, there's a big debate of whether you should sleep with pets. I'm just going to skip here for a future podcast and I'll tell you, yes, you should. Um, it takes a little training and then they can be your best sleep partners ever. So now let's get to it. One of the things I want to share with you is a verbal version, a podcast version of a blog that I wrote, and it is about all the sleep questions or many of the sleep questions, not all, that people ask. People ask all kinds of questions. Once you open that floodgate of, you know, sleep, exhaustion, energy, health, that it just explodes like a tsunami. Like what, what, what do we have here? A lot of questions and a lot of unanswered questions. So I think it's important for us to take a look at that. Let's, let's see what, what, what you, what you're wondering about. There might be a question here that you've wondered about that you haven't been able to find in the literature so far, or if you did, you were completely unsatisfied or it was unhelpful or very repetitive. Uh, one of the issues that I had and another reason why I wrote this book is because there were so many uh, questions and theories and statements that were put there as facts that aren't necessarily true. They're just repeated over and over again to the point where people start just thinking that they're facts and they just start sharing it. I'm talking specifically about sleep, not politics. <laughs> That's another show. Um, I mean, you know, just things like sleep, like you have to sleep, you know, you know, just 7.5 to 8 hours a day in order to have you. That's crazy because people have different requirements. And in general, many, many people do very well sleeping 7 to 9 hours, but that's not necessarily for everyone. So it's important for you to know what your particular sleep schedule is. What is the optimum amount of time that you require? And that's what people ask mostly. How, much, how long do I need to sleep? Speaking of questions, that's like number one. How long do I really need to sleep? Because, you know, this one says this and this one says the other, but most people say seven hours and the people are lost. They're completely lost. So the questions are endless and uh, I really, let's get started. Let's ask some questions. I won't be able to give the answers here because I mean, we'd be here until eternity, but we can explore them. The, many of the answers are in my book. Many of the answers will be addressed in future podcasts. So do not worry. You can always ask me and contact me at thisisdiana.com and let me know if you have any questions. What is it specifically? Did I address something that you um, wanted to know about and you wanted to know more about so we can do more podcasts and more sessions on that? As a certified science sleep coach, this is my job. This is what I do. This is what I love to do. And let's get started with the questions. So even before I became a sleep coach, I would always do all kinds of consultations, counseling sessions, uh, and coaching. And people would inevitably want to know certain things. For instance, we're going to get right on it. This is what I, it's on the blog and in my book as well. People want to know, uh, who do I talk to about my sleep or dream issue? In other words, who are the experts? Who are the people that know? Who is the authority in this field of sleep and dreams? 
And the answer is there are many, many different types of experts uh, or professionals or people that know. They don't always have medical degrees. They don't always have the same type of medical degrees, but they do exist. Many of them are love what they do, uh, but many of them are also caught in the cycle of, you know, kind of being very, very structured in the way they were trained and really don't want to step outside of that. And this is when it's important for you to really consider what works for you and find another professional, another qualified professional that can give you uh, the answers that work to make you healthier and more balanced. So it could be, for example, sleep experts could be medical doctors. They could be therapists. They could be neurologists, uh, Primary care is, is what I meant by medical doctors. They could be neurologists. They could be alternative he- health care providers. Somebody that can help you, for example, with pain or specifically uh, anxiety or somebody that's a dream worker that works with dreams and find out what you're, if you're having nightmares or if you don't remember your dreams and you want to. They, they're these, the list is extremely uh, diverse and it is something that's worth thinking about because it depends on your sleep. That's just one, at least give me, give you one answer for one of the questions. Another um, thing people, a lot of, another question people ask is, uh, well, how are these, uh, how is this advice given out? What is it that, these, how are these people trained to give a certain answer? And that's because they're research, they're research institutions, they're medical institutions that conduct a lot of research, a lot of money, private money, government money, uh, that, and funding that is thrown at certain uh, facilities to study dreams and study sleep, study sleep cycles, health in general. So a lot of these research are done and how they're done is very specific to what the question is, what the hypothesis is, and also what the researchers are wanting to look into. If it's something that is um, commonly occurring, for example, a lot of people are doing, currently doing research on why people are having so many vivid, strange dreams and nightmares during uh, this whole year that has been the pandemic year of COVID-19 that is fortunately over by now. The, the, the main, main um, unknown crisis is known. We're starting to get some answers. We're starting to get some vaccines. We're starting to get some, some progress. But people were having a lot more dream and s- dreams. They were strange. They're dreaming. They're remembering their dreams, their sleep cycle is completely irregular and confusing. Uh, they don't have that alarm clock anymore to control them. So now their own biological clocks are saying, hey, I'm the boss. So think about that. How were you affected by the pandemic? Were you at all? Uh, are you sleeping better? Are you sleeping worse? I couldn't help but I had to answer some of that that, <laughs> that question too. Okay, so I'm just going to go to through some of the other questions. I'm not going to answer all of them again, just because it's very hard to... Um, you know, stay focused with so many questions. But another thing is what kind of medications are used for treatment for sleep issues and are they necessary? What, what, um, impact does sleeping have on your waking life? What people consider the real living. They don't consider sleep, you know, real living. They consider it kind of, Oh, we have to do it. And, but really don't want to. It's a waste of time to sleep. The super go, go, go productive. Well, that's something that I'm really going to discuss in the future. Uh, the real life is all of it. Uh, do we really need sleep? That's connected. Yes, you do. <laughs> I have to answer that one. We'll go into detail again in the future. Um, who or what pays for the research uh, studies I told you about just a few seconds ago? And what is their purpose? What is their motivation? Uh, is it, you know, altruistic? Uh, let me help society. Or is there some other reasons why people want to push some things forward? We'll explore that as well. And okay, what happens when we fall asleep or as we're falling asleep? What is that process like? What's going on with us? Is sleep a biological need, a mental need, a spiritual need? What is it? What, what is it that, that it, why is it required? What happens when we wake up? What is that process like? What's going on with our brain and our minds when that happens? Again, this is the magic one. How much sleep do I need? Again, depends on the individual and circumstances, but it's worth absolutely crucial to worth finding your particular sleep requirements because that's what's going to bring you back to health if you're not healthy. 
how long can you go without sleep? Hmm? That's another thing that's been researched and kind of sadly, mostly on animals. Um, poor things. What happens if I don't ever go back to sleep? If I stay awake forever? Well, I think you know the answer to that. Most people, you know, will go back to sleep eventually. Uh, what are long sleepers? What are short sleepers? What is insomnia exactly? Because people use it a lot to cover a lot of sleep issues. We'll talk about that as well. It's also in my book. How can I wake up with more energy? This was what people really want to know sometimes. You need more sleep and you need better sleep. Who needs more sleep? Children, babies, adults, seniors? What connection is there between general health and sleep? What is narcolepsy? Why do I need so much sleep? A lot of people need a lot of sleep. Why do I need so little sleep? I only need two or three hours. We'll talk about that too. Why do some people differ so differently uh, in how much sleep they require, even within the same family? How much light? Uh, what is it about somebody that is a light sleeper that gets aroused very weak, uh, easily with noise or light? And how does that differentiate somebody that's a deep sleeper? I mean, you can explode a fireworks and they will just not move. What, what is that's going on there? Is it okay to take naps? What is the best position for you to sleep in in your bed? On the side, on your back, curled up, straight? What jet lag? Especially for those who commute globally uh, or just different time zones. Why do we dream? Why do we dream? Dream work is a whole other universe of work out there. And there are professionals dedicated for that, to, to that in that region of thinking in our brain, fascinating. Why do we dream and do we need it? Does everybody, does everybody dream? Why do some people remember their dreams and others don't? Is there such a thing as collective dreaming where more than one person dreams the same dream? And what's up with nightmares? I mean, nightmares are not fun. Why do children have tend to report more nightmares than adults? Why do nightmares happen in the first place? Why do nightmares happen for people who have a lot of brain or emotional trauma, as in with PTSD and anxiety? How can some people wake up and they're consciously awake, but they can't move? In other words, something called sleep paralysis, really terrifying stuff. And is it dangerous? Why do I have the same dream over and over again? Some people ask me or the same dream, but with different themes but it's pretty much the same location or the same topic. Some people want to know why they twitch at night during the night. Is that twitching? Is it normal? Is it something going on with your muscles? Is it an illness? Some people feel like they have hallucinations while they sleep and they might hear voices or feel a presence around them with or without sleep paralysis. What's going on there as well? Is it something purely just hallucinatory or something else going on there? Beyond our senses, that is just as real. Something spiritual. We'll explore that. I mean, we have to. It's one of the things that people really are concerned about as well. Do dreams come true? Are they prophetic? Do, can you? Are they predictive? How do we know? Is there proof? Do you feel like you can dream about the future? What are specific meanings of certain dreams in general? Why do you dream with a frog or why do you dream with rain? What do certain dreams mean? And do we all share the same meaning of what those things are? As if, if I dream with a frog, does it mean the same to me as if you dream with a frog? See, dream work provides some answers. What is lucid dreaming? Lucid dreaming is, again, another subtopic under the dream work, which is huge. And more and more people who are having a spiritual awakening are having more lucid dreams where they really feel like they are experiencing another life. Is this an example of soul travel or, again, just something purely biochemical in the brain? The debate continues. I have my personal opinion that I'd love to share with you, and I would love to hear yours as well. Can dreams solve real life problems? Can you find a solution to certain problems in your life via dreams? And the answer is yes, it's possible. Many people have a lot of famous people that we can talk about have. Should I sleep with my pet? Oh, I cheated. And I talked about that earlier. And I said, yes, some people say no, there are different reasons and there are different things to consider. For me, it's absolutely wonderful, especially if you train your pet to 
be calm and relaxed with you. You can it can be so relaxing and it can help you lower your heart rate and blood pressure. Good stuff. So it depends on who you ask, but I have my opinion I want to share with you. How do you set up your environment and your space and your home or wherever you may be so you can have the most positive, conducive, restorative, comfortable sleep possible under any circumstance? And that is where my environmental psychology, my organizational psychology, and also the work I've done on feng shui and interior design come in. And I am so excited to be able to share that with you. I don't see that out there too much, except for people to tell you to buy the most expensive mattress. Not necessarily so. You don't need to do that. Uh, But what does work, what mattresses do work, what pillows, what texture, what smells, what sights, what do you do to do to your body before you do so that makes it more comfortable for you to sleep. So we had like the, just the, the, the brunt of the questions, some of the questions that are out there about sleep. Do any of them resonate with you? Are you wondering, you know, some of the things there are, there's so many more, so many more people are worried. Well, Is it bad to do this or is it good to do that? And they put judgment in their sleep. We're going to talk about judgment and sleep. And believe me, when you're nocturnal, you're always being judged about your sleep schedule. So we're definitely going to talk about that. Uh, We're going to talk about, again, the medication or pills, supplements, food, exercise, all these things that are in between, you know, so you sleep with pajamas, you know, what kind of pillow should you use? Some people want to sleep nude. Is that recommended? Uh, wh- you know, what temperature should your room be? And more and many more, <laughs> many more questions. Uh, and there are so many, again, books and magazines and articles out there. And they're just missing the point. If, if they weren't missing the point, we wouldn't be where we are, where people are just so miserable. They're so exhausted. They're so, they're having accidents. They're falling asleep at the wheel. They're, you know, just dread going to sleep instead of looking forward to that precious, precious gift that we have of sleep and dreams. It is precious. And this is all about finding your sleep sweet spot. All about dreams. All about sleep. All about your comfort. And all about your health and balance. So I hope that you have some questions that you want to ask as well or something. Maybe you have some answer that nobody has been able to provide that you discovered yourself. A lot of times it takes us ourselves, our ingenuity, our curiosity, our persistence, our stick-to-itiveness to find the answers because they're just not available out there yet. So maybe there's something that you experience that you want to share. Please do. And stay tuned because in the future episodes, we're going to talk about this and plus all kinds of things that are related to sleep and health. For example, aging, sleeping beauty. There is a reason why it's called sleeping beauty. Sleep is the rejuvenator, the cleaner of our system. So it's a huge, one of the biggest things people ask, oh, how do you stay so youthful? I mean, really, you know, well, sleep, sleep, sleep is my number one answer. Um, It's good sleep, not just random sleep. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about so many more things regarding sleep. And let's get this party started (laughs) regarding sleep. Thank you for joining me. I'll let you um, soak up the questions. I'll let you think about it. I encourage you to read the the blog post or comment there if you want to. Again, it's all on thisisdiana.com. Just how it sounds. T-H-I-S-I-S-D-I-A-N-A.com. The blog is there, which is called the Info Center with tons of resources. I have also a product page where you can find uh, items that can help you sleep and resources that are available. Some are at no charge. You can just go there and download them. And some for certain, for example, candles that are made for sleeping or slash energy are handmade And they are made specifically customized. And you can check those out as well for a small charge. But either way, check it because there's free and um, customized resources available. All on thisisdiana.com for you. So we'll leave it there. We'll take a nice, conscious, deep breath. I hope this has been helpful. Please let me know. Your feedback is important. And thank you for joining me. Until next time, have a wonderful, sweet 
sleep somewhere.